I've been holding back on you. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure some of you already knew, but I've been keeping a big secret the past couple months. And now that the strikes are over, I finally get to share about it, and there is some really cool stuff to share. So what is this secret? What have I been holding back from all of you? Well, I'm happy to tell you right after you hit the like button on the video. While you're at it, subscribe to the channel if you enjoy Wheel of Time content. I'm inching closer to 40,000 subscribers. If you wanna help out, consider subscribing. But yeah, enough delay. Let me tell you the story here. So if you are not aware, for the season one release of The Wheel of Time, I was one of a few creators that were chosen to come out to the premiere in London and cover the red carpet. We got some fairly exclusive access to the cast and crew, and I got to see the first two episodes of season one before it was released out to the world. It was an amazing time, especially coming right out of COVID lockdowns and all of that. London was amazing. I had a great time. In fact, you can see an entire video blog of that trip and all of the people I got to meet in the interviews by watching this video up here. Somewhere. I will also have that linked at the end of this video. But that brings us to this year. I had no idea if I'd be asked back to anything like that and really had no expectations for it. I communicate with the showrunners or PR firms associated with the Wheel of Time TV show occasionally to get stuff like permission for clips at WatCon, things like that. But they hadn't mentioned anything. And so come the middle of this past summer, I assumed nothing was going to happen or at least that I wouldn't be a part of it. Then I got a message asking to chat. And of course, I got excited. They asked me to head out to see. San Diego Comic Con and cover things there in a similar experience to the first time. I'd be allowed to say whatever I wanted, good or bad, about the show, and they really just wanted to have some Wheel of Time specific content creators attend and be a part of the experience. I said yes, that is, until the Writers Guild of America strike and the Screen Actors Guild went on strike. Not only did that make attendance feel a little bit icky to me, but if the actors weren't going to be there anyway. Nevertheless, that trip ended up getting canceled, and I thought, oh well, I'll just cover the release of the show like I thought I would on the channel as normal. But then, then, a little bit later, they reached out again, and this time it was with an invite that was going to be really tough to say no to. I was asked to come out to Prague, tour Jordan Studios, and see some of the other sets, spend some time with the directors of the episodes and some of the crew, and take a special trip out to the Two Rivers set. What really sucked is, I sort of felt like I had to say no, and the others that were asked felt the same way. While I'm certainly not trying to be a part of the Screen Actors Guild or the Writers Guild, I have friends who are, and it just didn't feel right to me to promote the show. But Amazon did something that I was not expecting. Normally, when you get invited to something like this, you sign an agreement that says that you're going to make content about it, specifically what you're going to make and when you're going to release it. Amazon has never required anything like approvals on the content that you release, and they've never told me anything other than just to share my opinion as I give it, even if that opinion was negative. So I would never have had to sign something like that, but usually they say you have to make something. Well, Amazon was aware of our feelings towards the strikes, and they told us that we could come, but we wouldn't have any content required requirements at all. So no time frames. In fact, they told us we didn't have to make any content at all or tell anyone about the trip if we didn't want to. And they had no issue with us waiting until after the strikes were over to talk about our trip. Well, that was enough for me. So I said yes. So today I'm going to share with you about my trip to Prague, the things I got to see at Jordan Studios and the other sets, and my observations about the production, where I think the show is going in the future based on the things I saw, as well as some opinions on things I liked and some that I didn't. Call it a bit of a look behind the curtain. There will definitely be some sneak peeks about season three as well. So that was a super long story to get to this point. Come on a trip to Prague with me and we will check out behind the scenes of the Wheel of Time. So let me start by saying one of the best parts of this trip was just getting to spend some time with some people that I've grown to be friends with over the years of making Wheel of Time content. Also on the trip were my good friends Lauren, who you may know from his YouTube channel Unraveling the Pattern, Critter XD, who you know from everywhere like TikTok, YouTube, and being entertainment at WatCon, running social media, all of that, and then Kathy Campbell, head of Dragon Mount, and Rob from Malkir Talks and the Threefold Talk. So it was really awesome to hang out with them. And when we arrived in Prague, we didn't have anything planned until the following day. So we just decided to walk around Prague together. And let me tell you, if you have not been to Prague, it is an amazingly beautiful city. Considering I live in what is literally the definition of American Midwest suburbia, where nothing at all is walkable and all of the houses are mostly new, this was quite an experience. Prague is completely walkable. 
Every single building is incredible to look at. They're all really old, but yet in really great condition. I know there are tons of other cities in Europe like this, but this is a jealous American right here. Our hotel was basically in the middle of Prague, and considering how walkable everything is, we decided to go see the famous Prague astronomical clock, and we were clearly not the only people with that idea. Apparently, that's quite a popular thing to do in Prague. The astronomical clock is more than 600 years old. It was really cool to see. It's like very mechanical. I couldn't describe how it works if I tried. We also got to see some really cool churches and cathedrals as we were randomly wandering around the city, but you are not here for a tour of Prague. You want some Wheel of Time stuff. And I will say before we move on, if you want to see all of my pictures and videos, I'm going to have all of them posted up on my Patreon. You'll be able to see everything I took on the trip, including all of the stuff that will not be in this video. But let's get to our first major Wheel of Time related stop. And that was something I was not truly expecting. We went on a little car ride. We ended up in an undisclosed area right outside of Prague back in the trees. We get there and they're literally like filming or starting to do some film work again because the crew was everywhere. This was like a packed set. The production did not shut down for the strikes, believe it or not, uh, and not completely at least. And of course, we showed up at the rebuilt Two Rivers set. And for those that are not aware, they filmed episode one of season one and then they actually burnt down the Two Rivers set for the Trolloc attack. They rebuilt the set to start filming for season three and we were at the completely rebuilt set. So let me say this, there were a bunch of parts of this set that we were not allowed to film or take any pictures of because they would be major spoilers for season three. Those of you that have read The Shadow Rising will know the types of modifications to the set that I am talking about. Anyways, what stands out to me about this set was how detailed it was. Many of the buildings you could walk inside, they were operable, some of them even had interiors that were completely decorated, and it was just a really cool place to be, especially considering I've read about this place for 25 years now. You can tell the love that was put into making these sets. There were even some of the actual extras that make up the people of the Two Rivers that were there while we were visiting. The level of detail was great. It was amazing. They were hanging up herbs. There was an actual functional blacksmith. There were also some dead Trollocs lying around. Maybe also a little bit of a hint to the types of scenes they were filming there. Wink, wink. After being left to wander around the Two Rivers, though, as we wanted, we went inside the Wine Spring Inn and got to see the first two episodes of season two. But needless to say, the building has an upstairs. It's quite large on the inside. It was a very cool experience. But that was just our first night there. The next day, we were off to Jordan Studios, and I really had no idea what we would see. When we got there, we were split up into a couple groups, with all of us Wheel of Time creators being in one of the groups. Now, before I say too much more, Jordan Studios is enormous. It's an old truck factory, and it's gigantic. It's like the size of 15 Costco's, and it, there's a lot packed into the space even. Now, there are a couple different sound stages that we were taken to, and the first was an area with stunt doubles, where they plan and stage the stunts for the show. We got to meet Thomas Knapper, who's one of the directors for The Wheel of Time and one of the executive producers. We also got a demonstration of some of the stunt work. See if you can spot a familiar face right here. Like Zoe did like, you know, the fight with, with Ivan and Maxim. Oh, yeah. And then some of the fate fight and a little bit of kind of like generic fighting with, with Magdalena, our Tigre. I'm sure you recognize yeah. her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're amazing. So, yeah. <laughs> Everybody set? And three. Yeah. Ready? And three, two, two one, action. action. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was awesome. I got to take a picture with her too. And it's awesome to see how all those stunts are done. But right after that, we went to a new set. And let me say, I was not expecting this. This was one of the White Tower sets. And we got this amazing display of wigs that they use for the show staged on one of the walkways around the White Tower. Then of course, the next surprise was to see the Amerlin study in all of its glory right behind us with the Sex Shack Terran Grial on display. Again, the level of detail they go into on the production design is incredible to see in person. Person. You don't quite get how detailed things are when you watch them on TV, but all of that goes to make these places feel very, very lived in. 
I will admit, I am not much of a wig person. Hair is not my strong suit. But it was really cool to see how intricate some of the wigs were that they had some of the cast wear. Next, we went to a set, though, that was even crazier than the last. We got to see other parts of the White Tower set, along with many of the costumes on the show. This set was huge, and we got to basically explore anything we wanted walking around, and you could really get lost in there. We also had the pleasure of hearing from Sharon Gillum, who is the head costume designer for seasons two and three of Wheel of Time. I'm going to play you a short clip of some of what she said, and again, the full clips will be up on my Patreon if you want to hear it all. How does it feel to have the Sean Chan to deal with? Because I feel like they're so extra. Is that just super fun? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> they, the Sean Chan was my, creating the Sean Chan soldier was my very first job on this show. Wow. And the brief was just make something terrifying and weird and fantastical and strange that you've never seen before. Bye. Off you go. Um, and it's, I mean, you know, the books have so much information in them, that's the thing, and you take all of that information and you kind of just absorb it into your being, and, you know, certain things stand out, like the insect sort of side of it, and then once you start going down that route, then you're like, oh, insects start to like look for reference of weird and dangerous insects, and then what else, like, can I, and then I can add in a bit, like, um, reptilian would feel weird in this sort of in this look and and that's how Suros um, headdress came about that idea of the insect and the compound eye and the shoulders being you know the exoskeleton outside the body and all of these things the the death watch and the soul dam have these backpacks they're like because uh, I wanted to make their bodies look sort of deformed from the side so all these little tricks that you can play with just to make something look really weird but also really beautiful like I wanted her to be incredibly beautiful but terrifying at the same time um, you know and there's all the kind of cultural mixes that are in um, all of the different nations are a mix as you know of two different cultures and this is um, Mesoamerican and Imperial Chinese so you suddenly have like oh okay Imperial Chinese information coming in and then Mesoamerican, how do we represent that? And so that's the, the color palette is kind of Mesoamerican inspired, but it's also like rusting metal. Again, if you want to see all of my footage from Prague, including all of the interviews, it will be posted on Patreon for all the tiers. But once we left the White Tower sets, I thought, how could they possibly top all of that? And then they did. So we had to take a short ride on a golf cart to one of the back lots in the studio. But when we arrived, this is what we saw. Not entirely sure what we were looking at, that is, until the doors opened. This is the Tarvalon set. And let me say, it is absolutely massive. But the thing that stands out the most to me was the level of detail. There were Wheel of Time specific games sitting inside of the shops that you could probably barely see on screen. You could see like Go and Snakes and Foxes, and you could go inside of some of the buildings. There were multiple levels. It was amazing to wander around, to get lost in, and don't mind the Sean Chan guards. They aren't in Tarvalon for any other reason other than they wanted to show us the costumes in action, and they needed someone to keep us from wandering into areas we weren't supposed to be in. Keep in mind, they were filming. And here again, we got to speak with some of the crew. Specifically, it was super cool to hear from Sanaa Hamri, who's one of the executive producers on the show and one of the directors as well. So where were Matt and Rand sitting? Right there. Love it right there. <laughs> Over there. As a director, um, you have to have that luxury of composition and space and also you have to plan your shots i think if you look at season one where you're really getting to know like each character mm -hmm. and um we're, it's like an introduction in a great base you know who is the dragon reborn yeah. we find out it's ran now when we come to season two everybody's scattered right and they're on each other they're in different journeys they're they're by themselves so when you're by yourself and we're revealing these new worlds we have to be able to take the camera and kind of be in the head of yeah. the character so what happens is when you have more worlds and different locations the camera naturally um, hmm. kind of just gets bigger there was a conversation 
that we had internally with Rafe and our fellow other fellow executive producers about what's the tone of season two. Mm -hmm. Well, it's driven by story, and the story makes us open up that kind of stylistically of keeping that camera moving and also composing shots that are continuous. So it's not like a choppy rendition. Mm -hmm. Again, the entire experience walking around these sets was incredible. But in general, this was a great trip. Hanging with great people, nerding out about the Wheel of Time, and of course seeing some amazing sets that bring to life my favorite story of all time. One thing I will mention that was especially awesome was meeting and spending time with the Tweeter of Chaos. I'm sworn to secrecy, but we got to grab dinner on the last night on the river. And the Tweeter of Chaos is a true Wheel of Time fan. Like a, I picked up the books in 1993 and I've read them more than 20 times front to back type of fan. So they're one of us. Ultimately, we got to see something that I may never get to see again. Who knows how many seasons Wheel of Time will get. I'm grateful that I got to see and interact with some of the professionals. And that was probably my biggest takeaway from my time in Prague. Whether I or anyone else completely loves the end product, that does not take away from the fact that the people working on this show are professional, incredibly creative, and very talented. There are certainly parts of the end product that I didn't love, there are choices I didn't agree with, but nothing was arbitrary, and there is passion from the producers down to the stunt work. And I should mention this too, the show is absolutely massive in scope. I I've never been around a production this close before, and it is gigantic. I definitely see where the money goes now. In just Prague, there were more than 800 people working for the show. That's in just one of the studios that they're filming from. The size and scale of the set that's the props department, which we got to drive through on a golf cart, if that gives you an idea of the size. They were all super impressive. So that's my not so quick rundown of my trip to Prague earlier this year. I'm excited I can finally share about it and I have all of my footage and pictures will be posted on Patreon. Leave a message in the comments of this video if you have a question or something specific you want to know about the sets or the crews or the interviews or whatever, and I'll do my best to get to them. Again, please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel to be updated when I release more Wheel of Time content like this. Massive thanks to my patrons who fund this channel with their real life money. You all rock. You can find the link to the description of this video if you would like to become a patron as well. And of course, if you like this video, you will probably like one of these ones right here as well. Thanks for watching and until next time, peace out.